If you are new to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We had a question come in on Monday. Yep, and you can certainly do this. You can certainly send us a question via twvgshow at gmail.com, our Facebook page, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, social media, a like, just go to our website, the wisconsinvegetablegardener.com, you'll find all of that. What was the question we had come in? We have a row of our river ties along our property for about 20 years, 20 in all. Um, some of them, about a handful of them, have turned um, completely brown, just sections of them. Why is this, and you know what? What can I do to help this? First of all, th- these are like tall shrub trees for people who are not familiar with the term. Uh, yeah, kind of different... like kind of like looking like Christmas trees of some sort. They're, they're, yeah, you know. kind of. They're more shrubbish than like right. Trees, but I want people to have a, an idea of it. It's more of like a cylinder. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like it's like in the bush variety. Uh, so there's this thing called winter burn, and winter burn affects uh, arbor ties. Um, so basically it's just from something like this winter we have that was long and cold and long and cold. So what happens is that your plants are basically being droughted during the winter, and they're feeling the effects of that long kind and cold. Kind of like dehydration of the plant? Right. Okay. So there's a few things you can do. Is One is to select a sheltered location, but if you're putting them on a proper li- property line, which a lot of people do, there's not much you can do there. Um, some people wrap them with, like, burlap. Right, people, yep, that's the other thing, is burlap, um, some sort of arbor vitae wrap. You go to your local garden center, and they're going to have that. Don't wrap it in plastic no. because these things have to they breathe, breathe, but yeah. they, they need some type of minor protection from the, that wind. And then you can water it up until it starts to freeze. So if the ground's not frozen, you can water it. If it thaws, if you get that grouping of warm days in January or February, you can water it. That's going to help That's gonna help that. Um, and then make sure you mulch over the root zone. Uh, and the mulch can be dry grass clippings, shredded leaves, a straw, uh, wood chips, something like that. But, again, we want to protect that. Now, you, it, these places, the, these trees that have the, the uh, dried-out areas, we don't want to trim them off, or do we trim them you off? You can trim them off. Okay, just type of, but that do type it, of thing. But do it gently. Uh, I also want to make mention that MI Gardener, uh, one of the, the official seed sponsor of the program, they've opened a store up in the town over in uh, Michigan I today. Think it's in St. Clair, Michigan. Uh, somewhere in that yeah. area. But today was a grand, there's a grand opening, uh, and we wanted to, to congratulate them. Yep. That was a, uh, they have six years of, of planning, four months of preparation or, or of a storefront, and now they're open to encourage and help the community grow a better garden. Uh, for them uh, in their own backyard. So I uh, send them, go to migardener.com and send them an email and say thank you and congratulations, that type of thing. And again, your emails are welcome at twvgshow at gmail.com. Jeff, a uh, message just on Facebook, our Facebook page, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener, and he asked that uh, about peppers. Uh, we bought some bell pepper plants pre starts or starts from the store. Uh, they're in a our garden during uh, doing well, about 10 inches tall and flowering. Some have already flowered and are starting to produce fruit, uh, very small buds. A professional produce grower told us to pick off the flowers uh, and the buds, and this would allow the plant to grow better. Is this right? I worry that they may not reflower if I pluck them off now. Well, thank you for the question, Jeff. Uh, the, 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 the grower that told you this is correct. You can pull the flowers off of the plant and that will produce the, that will cause the plant to put more energy in the plant growth production rather than fruit production. They will come back. Now we have never exercised, exercised this practice in our garden. We simply allow the plant to flower and bloom whenever uh, it wants to. Uh, people had once said the similar uh, method for the first year strawberry plants. When you buy the plants or the, the, the root plants, uh, bare root plants, you plant them. When they flowered that first year, you were supposed to pick the buds off to allow more energy to go into the root development, and that's simply not true. But you can, if you've got a, a lot of pepper plants here, you can experiment half with one method and leave the other half alone. They will reflower. The production of a pepper plant is solely to produce fruit, to, to produce seed, to carry on the traits of the next generation. That's why, as we've talked about on the program, if you continually harvest your produce, your plants will continue to produce much more heavily than they would if you just left one particular fruit or uh, a vegetable on that plant and the seeds become mature and the plant really shuts down from growing. So, 
Uh, you can pluck them off. We don't. Uh, it will work either way. They will reflower uh, as the uh, plant gets to the point of needing to reflower. Brittany asked under our Facebook post of the in-studio video of uh, show 15 of organic bug control, I'm having some issues with black bugs on my spinach, small green worms on my kale. What do you recommend? And we do not use chemicals in our garden. Any advice would be helpful. Thank you. Well, the without an image, the black bugs on your spinach is most, I'm going to guess it's flea beetles. The uh, a typical flea beetle is a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch long. The exception is uh, the spinach flea beetle, which is about a quarter of an inch long. These vary in color from black, bronze, uh, brown, metallic gray, uh, while some species have large back legs uh, to e- enable them to hop from plant to plant. Uh, sticky cards work very well. It's an not, it's a, not a chemical that you're putting on the plant. It's actually a card that you put next to the plant or in amongst the plants. And it's a bright color with adhesive that they will attach themselves to and they can't get removed. Uh, there are applications of chemicals in which you can spray, but uh, we do not recommend that. But flea beetles is what I would say those are. Cabbage worms is what you have on your kale. Uh, the easiest method of removal is pulling them off with your fingers. Now, that is not always the... Uh, easiest way to find them. They do do a tremendous amount of damage. Uh, Again, yellow sticky traps uh, can work, as we talked about with the flea beetles. Um, You can catch the adult butterflies uh, before they lay the the, uh, eggs on the plant, but at this point you've already got the cabbage worm or the worm, so that really is not that effective, but they are still flying around, so that may be something you want to look into. But uh, they may also, they they may also att- uh, uh, attract beneficial insects too. So it's not a selective means of bug removal. Spraying the plant with Bt, which is a natural bacteria uh, in nature, every one to two weeks will help control the cabbage families of pests. Um, seven, we don't really want to use that because from harvest for application to harvest, you need 21 days, and it's actually a nerve agents that would just destroy the nerve agents uh, in these bugs and you know you can ingest it too and that's not healthy for you so there there's some ways there other people have said you can dampen the leaves of the plant and sprinkle whole grain cornmeal uh, on the plants that uh, we've never tried that but that could and the caterpillars would eat this and they swell up and they die never tried it it's certainly an easy means of trial and error most of us have cornmeal in the in the pantry that will work but your uh, your problem with that is the uh, the cabbage worms on your kale and if you've got them on your kale you probably do have them on your cabbages and other leafy greens like uh, thank you for checking out the wisconsin vegetable gardener radio show for more go to the wisconsin vegetable gardener.com for full link in studio video and podcast replay of season one season two underway and added weekly Tweet us at TWVG Show or hashtag TWVG to be part of the program.